right, so today we are talking about the beautiful Cervelo Soloist. And more specifically, we're gonna talk about how that bike rides out in the real world. For those of you that want some more details or maybe you wanna figure out how this bike came to be, we've actually already done a first look on it. So you can go ahead and click that up here. All right, so we're actually here to talk about how this bike rides. And to do that, I wanna bring in an expert, someone who has put countless miles. Well, I suppose you probably count them, but someone who has ridden a ton of miles on this thing, Team Mike's Bike's very own, Gavin Halady. All right, well, we've got to give Gavin some credibility here, so we got to figure out who he is. So Gavin, uh, this was your first year on Team Mike's Bikes. How, how did you get your start in racing? You're, you're from the Bay Area. Yes, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm from here, and I started racing uh, with the Nike NorCal, NorCal mountain bike stuff, and then uh, just kind of pivoted the road, and now I'm here. So we're, we're obviously here to talk about the Soloist. That was your race bike for this year. We raced on Cervelo and, and your bike specifically was the Soloist. So how, how, let's just give some perspective as to how much you've ridden this thing. How, how many miles do you think you rode this year in training? I think I'm uh, just around 6,000 miles on the bike. Yeah, it's been pretty good so far. So for Where to Wander, we've been doing it this way pretty much the whole time. We've got 100 points. And Gavin, I'm gonna have you distribute those points across five specific areas. First being acceleration, climbing, flatland speed, handling, and comfort. You've got those numbers in your head, so let's start with acceleration first. All right, so you gave 21 points for acceleration. That's a pretty middle of the road score. What, what do you think when, when you're thinking about bikes in general? Like what, what makes up a good accelerating bike? Uh, it's definitely for me. It's definitely the snap. Um, just there's some bikes, you know, you, you get out, you know, the saddle, and you start to like sprint, and it just kind of nothing happens. So that's a bike that's not accelerating well. So this does a pretty good job of just being pretty snappy, which is which is what I like. So yeah. yeah. What do you think makes the soloist uh, feel snappy? So as you mentioned, bottom bracket. Um, Sorel is pretty known for their thick bottom brackets. Um, but also the wheel combo on this is pretty good. Reserve makes a pretty fast wheel. I think another big component of, of sprinting and acceleration uh, comes into stability. You know, you're up out of the saddle, the bike's got a lot of movement to it. How does how does the bike feel when you know, you're know you up and out of the saddle and the bike's moving around? Is it stable? Um, does it feel like you can still handle and control? Yeah, it feels pretty solid. Um, my only knock is probably my own fault. I put some 38 centimeter bars on there. It's a little narrow, but uh, yeah, it definitely feels stable. Definitely never feel like I'm too like squiggly. So yeah, it's pretty good, yeah. All right, so climbing is next. And climbing, this is your highest score uh, at 24 points. What do, you, what do you think makes a bike climb well? You know, similar to sprinting, you know, that bottom bracket is really important, but in climbing, you know, what, what do you think kind of constitutes a, a well climbing bike? So there's the obvious one, weight. Um, what I think is more important is like the seating position, just the general like climbing position. And since it's a relatively comfortable bike, I have no trouble getting to a nice like comfortable uh, position. So I guess put some put some serious power down. Yeah. So that's pretty important to me. Yeah. How does it feel on those short styles of climbs? So I, talking about back to acceleration. So it's nice to have that snap into those climbs. But then once you know, as I was saying, you know, you get back into the comfortable position and then you just can put the power down. So, um, you know, out of the saddle, a lot of, a lot of strength, sitting in, you got a nice position. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty perfect for that kind of terrain. How does it feel on, you know, longer climbs, things where you're, I don't know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, long stuff? Yeah, again, it's super comfortable. Um, so I, can, I very easily can just get into just the tempo. So I think it feels pretty good. All right, so for Flatland Speed, you awarded it 17 points. What do you think the bike feels like when you're out in the open and you're getting hit with wind? Like, how, do, how does that feel for you? Um, it feels relatively comfortable. Um, it does a pretty good job, kind of, well, the wheels aren't too deep, so it's not, you're not gonna hit by too much, but um, you do feel a little bit because it is, uh, you know, in the middle aerodynamic. So yeah, it, it feels decent for sure. I think that really plays into, you know, what we were just talking about climbing too, where, you know, those longer climbs, like that comes back to like having a good comfortable position. Like, can you get your elbows down low? Can you feel like you can get into a tempo? You know, a big solo effort, or, or even like if you're in a small group and you're getting battered with the wind, like, can you feel stable on the bike? And I feel like that's something that the soloist really does well. Yeah. 
All right, next up is handling and you awarded it 16 points here. Um, handling is one of those things that is like, I feel like it's both incredibly important and not important at all. Like for me, I grew up in the Midwest and like we go straight. Yeah. And then every mile you got a 90 degree corner. Here in California, we've got so many wonderful roads that turn and we race criteriums and road race and all sorts of stuff. So what do you look for? What makes a bike handle well? I think what's uh, most important to me is, you know, if you're cruising down a set, let's say like 30 miles an hour, you hit a corner, um, it's just predictable. Um, and I think at, at higher speeds, uh, this bike is. So I think maybe there's two pieces to start to break out there. So there's the high speed corners. You know, you say you, you roll into something at like a high speed. How does the soloist maintain its line? Yeah, I think that's, that. we were talking earlier about kind of the length of the bike. And I think at higher speeds, that's just gonna, smoothing stuff out. But then it gets to lower speeds, you feel a little bit, I'm not gonna say it's bad, it's just a little unpredictable, a little bit twitchy maybe at lower speeds, but. That, that like kind of parking lot test where you're, you're slow speeds or when you're changing direction? Um, it's kind of when you're changing direction, it'll kind of like flop over a little bit, but I mean, how often are you going like four miles an hour in a parking lot, you know? Exactly. All right, last section is comfort and you awarded 22 points. so. It's a pretty comfortable bike compared to some of the other scores that we've got. It is, at the end of the day, your race bike. How much does comfort you know, play into the decision in a race bike? What, why, why would you want a bike that's comfortable if it's a real race bike? Well, um, some of those races are pretty long for sure. Um, so it's kind of nice to have a back that's still functioning you know, at, on the last climb. So it's definitely nice there. I haven't really had any back issues on this bike and I have in the past. So. Um, that's quite nice. How does the bike feel on you know normal pavement? Like, is it you know communicative as to like what you're riding on? Yeah, definitely. But at the same time, um, with the wide tires we've got on, we're pretty much all, you're not you're the only one not running 28s. Almost all of us are running 28 um, mil tires um, with some pretty wide uh, rims as well. So it definitely kind of smooths and stuff out. Which I guess you could say you lose some road feel, but you're definitely getting more grip. You're definitely getting a little more comfort. So. Yeah, I think that's kind of the perfect setup, 28s, perfect. All right, so we've talked through all of your scores, we've added up to 100. You are a very fast, very focused racer. Um, aside from yourself, who do you think is maybe the best rider that would benefit from a new soloist? I think the soloist is, does a pretty good job of um, catering to a pretty large group of riders. So it could be anything for someone like me who's really trying to race at a high level, or someone who just wants to like ride once a week and whatever the terrain, I think it'd be good flat, good with climbing. So it's pretty much a perfect all arounder. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty perfect. All right, so that is the Cervelo Soloist, uh, an incredible all around bike. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, please ask questions down below in the comments or reach out to our online support team. We'll put the email and the phone number down below. Gavin, thank you for being here and we'll see you at the races. That's where all the best footage is gonna come from. Screw oh, right, this right. thing. Is it still rolling? Yeah. <laughs> of all the footage I shot with it yesterday, it was Yo, what's up, guys? <laughs> There's how many? It's like 45 megabytes. <laughs> okay, you can go back to the intro. Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back. We're out here. Where to wander? Whoa. Whoa.